Welcome, friends. We're so glad that you have chosen, as this week begins, to study with us from the Word of God. Study is that that is so important if we are studying the right thing. And Paul wrote Timothy and said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, handling or right the word of truth. We study to show ourselves approved unto God. Study is so important, reading the word, listening to the word, because without faith, it's impossible to be pleasing to God for thee. He that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of him that diligently seek in him. And how does faith come? In Romans the 10th chapter and verse 17, the record said, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing from the word of God, to increase our faith, to strengthen our faith. We must study and reflect on the holiest book of all, the book we call the Bible. The letter to the Galatians was an unusual letter. Of the 13 letters that Paul wrote, this is the only one that was written to a group of churches. And these churches were ones that were Gentiles. They were ones that, while certainly they were ones that had some Jews among them, Largely, they were composed of Gentiles, and most of these churches were ones that had been begun by the apostle or else through the influence of the apostle as he sent those that worked with him in varied regions to preach the same word that he preached. And these churches had eagerly and quickly received the gospel that he had. And as we look, when he left, there were those that came among them and quickly moved them away from that gospel. And Paul was astonished. In verses 6 through verses 9 of the first chapter, he said, I marvel that you so quickly are removing from him who called you in the grace of our Lord unto another gospel, which is not another gospel, only there be some that would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You know, as we look, we find the spirit of moving quickly from one position to another is demonstrated as Paul preached among these churches, Lystra and Derbe and Iconium, for he went into one city and there he found a lame man, and that lame man was one that heard Paul. He had been lame and crippled his life, and Paul gave him health and strength so that he leaped up and he walked, and the people were astonished. They thought Paul was a god, and they were going to offer sacrifice to him, and only by the strength of Paul and Barnabas, his companion, were they prevailed not to do that. But just a little while later, these same individuals turned against Paul and stoned him and left him from dead. And so we see the fickleness of those that were of this quarter. They quickly received, but then they quickly turned away. We look at these individuals. They were turning away from the gospel. The gospel Paul had preached unto them. Now, what was that gospel? Well, what that gospel was, defined by Paul in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. He said, Now, I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you receive, wherein also you stand, by the which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which I delivered unto you, except you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he had been raised from the dead the third day, according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is that that consists of three things, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ not only was the anointed one, the Messiah, if you please, but he was that, that is, the very Son of God. For one cannot become a part of his kingdom 
and of the movement that he made possible, except upon this confession, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The gospel is the good news, the good news that Christ did die for our sins and that he was raised again. We can have uh, peace because our sins have been washed away because Christ died for us. And uh, then uh, we can have hope because God raised him from the dead. There were those that were coming among them, and these individuals were ones that brought a different gospel. These were individuals that were described in latter days as Judaizers, uh, Judaizing teachers. These individuals were ones that were Jews, but then they had embraced the tenets of the gospel. They had accepted the fact that Jesus was their Messiah, the Son of God, that he had died, he had been raised from the dead. They believed that, they had obeyed that, and they become members of the body of Christ. But they had baggage with them uh, that was that that would be troublesome to the church, predictably so, but nevertheless troubling so. For these individuals, as Jews, were not ready to turn loose completely of the law. They weren't ready to turn loose of the rituals of the law and of those things that had been bound even before the law, circumcision given first to Abraham. And so, as they went among these churches that Paul had founded, Gentiles, those Gentile individuals had not observed the law, and they were uncircumcised. And these Judaizing teachers were ones that told them, you've got to keep the law, and you've got to be circumcised. It troubled Gentile churches everywhere. And uh, it was that that produced no little heartache on the part of the apostle. Now, there are those that have the idea that there is a difference between gospel and doctrine. They say gospel are these three facts. The death of Christ for our sins, his burial, his resurrection. He's the Son of God. And we have to all agree on that and believe in that. But doctrine is everything else. It has to do with the matter of how the church is organized, the day we're to keep, the Lord's Supper, doctrine. And we can differ as far as that's concerned. No, my friends, this distinction does not exist in the Scriptures. Gospel is doctrine, and doctrine is gospel. And there is nothing that illustrates that any better than the problem here that Paul addresses as he writes to these churches that are in Galatia. They didn't deny that Jesus was the Son of God. They didn't deny that he had died for their sins. They didn't deny that he had been buried and risen again. They believed that. But they were teaching these Gentile Christians, they had to keep the law. They were teaching these Gentile Christians they had to be circumcised. And that, Paul said, was another gospel. They were teaching a different gospel. Now the world would define what they were teaching as doctrine upon which we can differ. But Paul says you can't do that. No, that is not just doctrine, for doctrine is the gospel, and the gospel is doctrine. These were departing from him who called them. And the idea of departing from God who calls is a significant thing and a troublesome thing because we're called by God, but we're called through the gospel. And by the gospel, we're called out of darkness to marvelous light. Out And by the gospel, we're called to be saints. We're called in one body. And to depart from that calling is to not walk worthily of that calling. And it is that we must return back to that gospel again. So they were removing from the gospel. But Paul said there was something very grave about that. And that was, we cannot alter the gospel of Jesus Christ We find that Jesus said, we must keep his word. The wise man wrote, add thou not to his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. In the last book of the New Testament, 
the book of Revelation, in the last chapter of that book, that warning is sounded again. And John said, I say to every man that's among you, if anyone changes and adds to the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone shall take away from the words of the book of prophecy, God will take away his part from the holy city and from the tree of life. We're not to add to his words. We're not to take away from his words. But as Paul wrote, abide in the doctrine that you received. And Jesus tells us, if you abide in my words, then are you truly my disciples? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Paul had done that, and the apostles had done that. And now here were some that were ones that were removing from the gospel unto another gospel. But Paul says, it's not another gospel. It's not good news. It's not good news because he said those who do so pervert the gospel of Christ. And then he gave this stern warning. Paul said, I say to you that those that depart from the gospel, though we are an angel from heaven, should preach unto you any gospel other than that which we have preached unto you, let him be anathema. And then Paul repeated it. He said, as I said before, so say I now again, though we are an angel from heaven, proclaim unto you any gospel other than that which we preached unto you, let him be anathema. Let him be accursed. A person brings a curse upon himself. If he teaches something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must abide in the things we've learned and been assured of, as Paul instructed Timothy. But, as we've observed, these individuals were wise that brought this doctrine to these Galatian Christians and to the Gentile churches throughout the world, for it affected many, many churches. And they were wise because they realized something. They realized that these Gentile churches were ones that, by and large, were ones that had been converted through the efforts of Paul the Apostles. And if they were going to have any influence among them, and they were going to have any sway among them, they must discredit Paul in the eyes of these Galatians. And so Paul will really deal with his apostleship and with the gospel these were departing from, and that they had already attacked his apostleship is evident. For not only does he say that I am an apostle by the authority of Jesus Christ and of the Father, he also says, I certify to you, brethren, that the gospel that I preached unto you is not after man. It wasn't from man, didn't come from man. I wasn't taught it. It came to me the revelation. But was Paul really an apostle? Was he really one that was teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? We can say without reservation and hesitation, yes, he really was an apostle, equal to the twelve. Yes, he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that will have to wait. And uh, the speaking of that and studying that will have to wait to another time. That will be the subject of uh, our next study. But we encourage you to remember uh, that uh, there is the study of Daniel that may be heard on Wednesday and our journey through Acts uh, that will be studied on Friday. Avenues, opportunities uh, to enlarge your understanding of the Word of God. We hope you will join us for all of these studies. Give yourself to study and to prayer, for this is well pleased unto God. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may you prosper in his love and in devotion to him. Thank you.